Okay, so this is gonna be my video about how I got into Penn and all the other schools that I got into, um, which is basically like my stats and my extracurriculars and any advice that I have on like what I think was the most important and all of that stuff. To start off with test scores, I took the SAT twice. The first time was in August, um, but right before my junior year, I got a 1550. I got 800 math, 750 reading, and then I decided to retake it um, a few months later, I think in December, and I got the same score. I also got a 1550, but I got a 790 math and a 760 reading, and what that meant is that I could super score to a 1560 on um, for the schools that allow super scoring. But anyways, after that, I also took the, S the ACT in February, and I got a 35. I forgot, I think I got a 36 on the reading and the writing section, whatever that's called, and a 35 on the math, and then a 34 on the science, and that like averages out to 35. Okay, so here are the APs that I took. I got a 5 on AP Chinese, AP US History, AP Calculus BC, AP Statistics, and AP English Literature and Language, so I took both of the Englishes. I also got a 5 on AP Psychology, and then I got a 4 on AP Computer Science A. I also took AP, Gover AP US Government and AP Physics, but those didn't turn out that well, and so I didn't end up reporting it on any of my applications. And then I'm also planning on taking AP Micro and Macro Economics this year. I don't know if I'll actually end up doing that, because I don't know if Penn will end up taking those credits, and if they don't, then I'd rather not take extra exams, so we'll see. About school, so my school does everything on a 4.0 GPA scale, and then we have weighted GPAs for our honors classes, which was most of my classes. So like, I had a 4.80 weighted GPA at the end of my junior year. I think that's probably higher than normal and it's because my IB classes were all weighted and I had to take like six IB classes every year. So the vast majority of my classes were weighted. The good thing about GPAs is that they always compare your GPA to other people in your school. So if you're not in an IB school, then you won't be looking at like IB students' GPAs compared to yours, if that makes any sense. So moving on to my extracurriculars, which I spent a lot more time thinking about how to like structure those on my application, more so than academics, obviously. Also, just as background, I wanted to go into business, um, but I structured my application around my activities and a lot of that was arts related so the two weren't necessarily correlated i did have some business like activities but that wasn't the bulk of my application and i think colleges understand that you're not going to get a lot of business experience as a high school student okay so i pulled up my common app application so that i can like talk about my activities that i put so Common App and Coalition have different ways of sorting activities, same with the UC application, but the Common App is the one that I use for most of my schools. So my first activity that I put, I was the, I'm the editor-in-chief of our county newspaper. Um, I'm a co-editor-in-chief with my friend Ashley, and we do, it's an online county-wide newspaper, just journalism, basically. And then I put that I'm the dance captain for my school's theater program and I had it I kind of had some trouble structuring my common app because I do a lot of things and I didn't exactly know how to always word it so for this one for my next activity I just put dance and then underneath that I put dance captain for my school's theater program as well as that I dance outside of school um, and then I also put that I've been a member of my debate team for four years although I don't have a leadership role I still put that pretty up to the top because I spent a lot of time on that club and it's one of my favorite and most influential clubs, and so I put that closer to the top. I also put that I'm an officer of National Art Honor Society, um, pretty self-explanatory. This was also one that I'd been a member for three years and I only got a leadership position in my senior year. So that's, again, leadership is not always the biggest thing. Um, I also put that I did Difference Makers, which is a really local um, community service organization that I've been doing since middle school. And then I put that I'm the editor of my school newspaper, The Tide. I edit graphics for them. And then I started getting into internships. And so the way the Common App is structured, you put all of your activities and internships into one place. And for me, 
I personally think my internships had a really huge impact on influencing kind of what I wanted to do and like figuring out what I liked and all that. So my summer before ninth grade, that was like my fun summer. I did like some dance intensive camps. I did some volunteering, just fun stuff like that. I did some traveling and that year should really be intense. Like I know you're getting into high school, but it's not that big of a deal. Have fun. My summer before sophomore year was also kind of my like confused year. I didn't really know what I was doing. And so I did another dance camp. I did some fun stuff like I did a pageant. I'm gonna get into more of that if I make a video about my essays, but that was kind of just for fun and it's super spur of the moment. I wasn't like ever super like intensely thinking about college. So that was a year where I was still figuring things out. I also volunteered at VizArts, which is a local art summer camp kind of thing. And I went to Maine. Like it also wasn't a very intense year. Um, my summer before junior year is when I really started getting like, oh, I was like, oh, I need to get a serious internship. I was an intern at Keller Williams Realty, which is a real estate agency, and they had a local chapter. And a lot of people ask how I get internships. So this specific internship, I think it differs for everyone. I think if you're in STEM, there's a lot more opportunities for you to find internships through career counselors at your school or through like online, like literally just Google searching because all the big ones like NIH, NIST, NASA, like a lot of my friends did those. They have very clear like internship opportunities and they're pretty like the application is just online. For me, I kind of wanted to do marketing and I kind of wanted to do business and I wasn't super sure and I didn't really know where to find an internship for that so what I did was I posted like a little message in my community neighborhoods forum thing next door if you know of it but basically what I said was oh I'm a high school junior I'm looking for an internship in this here's my experience working um doing like some stuff with DECA and things like that is anyone willing to offer me an internship basically and so it was a lot more of like me seeking out opportunities and I got a few replies, but I ended up going with this one person who owned a real estate agency and he was like, I'm willing to give you an opportunity, come work for us. I started out just kind of being like a marketing assistant. I helped out with a lot of things and I kind of talked to them a little bit about social media because that was one area that they weren't sure in. And then by the end of the summer, I was managing five different social media platforms as well as helping to create content for their YouTube channel. It was like a really good experience, I think. That was pretty much what I did the entire summer along with studying for the SAT. My summer for senior year, I applied for the Bank of America Student Leaders Program. It's a pretty competitive program. I think they have a roughly 3% acceptance rate. Basically what happens is you are put into this Bank of America Student Leader Program and Bank of America connects you to a local community nonprofit where you can intern for the summer. So I live in the DMV area. There was the YMCA headquarters in DC, that's where I worked for the summer. It was a really cool opportunity to see kind of the business side of a nonprofit, and I worked in the communications marketing department of the YMCA. What I realized is basically like a lot of companies, they don't, especially if they are not actively seeking out interns, they don't necessarily need someone to fill a position. So in order to get the most out of your experience, you have to kind of ask around and figure out what you want to do. A bunch of the people that I met at that program I'm still friends with today and it's really cool and I literally, I love that program so much. Also that summer um, I did a debate tournament in California so I did the Great Communicator debate series. They had regional competitions in the spring and then the nationals were in California but that was another highlight of my summer. So besides that, all of that like formal stuff, I also did a few things on the side. I work as a tutor. I've tutored a bunch of different people. I started out as a volunteer tutor in like ninth grade, um, tutoring low income students. And then I slowly started tutoring um, as like kind of a side job, but it was mainly just cause I love teaching kids and I like children. And so I did that. I also worked for a very brief time as a studio artist for a local interior designer. Um, doing helping her with some art projects. That was pretty short-lived because I just started like the August September of this of 2019 and so it didn't last that long um, and obviously I don't work there now. Now also on the Common app the way they structure it is they have an activity section and then they have an awards 
section. The awards are like academic awards supposedly, but I'm not, I was never like a very academically forward person in that like most of my awards were not academic. I never did like math counts or computer science team or like any kind of like science competitions. So I had a lot of trouble with this section and I'm gonna just tell you what I came up with at the end and what I ended up submitting. First off, I was a National Merit Scholarship semi-finalist. Like, I submitted the Common App before the finalist decisions came out, and so I had to put semi-finalist. I put that I was a New York Times Poetry Contest winner. It was a one-time thing, it was very short. I submitted a poem that I'd written before, like, I didn't write it for this competition, and I didn't really think much of it at the time, because I think I did it in 11th grade. And it ended up being, like, my second academic award, just because I realized I didn't have any academic awards, and I kind of had, like, a mental breakdown about that for a hot second, but it ended up being fine. Um, I figured that because poetry is like writing, it's kind of academic. I really didn't have any academic awards, you guys. I put that, I got bronze in the national Spanish exam in like 10th grade. That's how much I didn't have awards, okay? So we're not gonna dwell on that one. I also, I got a gold and silver key for Scholastic, which is an art and writing competition, so I got it for some paintings. That's why I was hesitant to put it as an academic award, because it was for painting. But I do take art in class, and I was like, why not? And then my last one was DECA. I don't know if this was a mistake on my part, because I ended up not putting DECA in my activity section. I just put it in my awards. And I think I probably shouldn't have done that. I think I should have emphasized DECA a little bit more. Um, but I just like was running out of space on my activities section because I wanted to include my internships and things like that. So I just put it in my awards. I did DECA for all four years and I was never in any leadership position. I learned a lot and I had a ton of fun. I think a lot of people, it's structured super differently at every school, but if you don't know what it is, it's basically a business club competition, very similar to FBLA, if you know what that is. And I won first place at States sophomore year, second place at States my junior year, and both of those times we qualified and we went to the international competition. It was also my only like real business activity, so that's why I'm thinking I probably should have talked about it more. Now that like all of those things are out of the way, I'm going to talk about what I thought was most important in getting me into the schools that I got into. Obviously, I don't know, but I can like kind of figure it out. So I think for one thing, teacher recs are important, especially if you're an underclassman in high school, it's important to talk to your teachers. And I'm not saying to suck up to them and give them like really expensive gifts on Christmas. Like it's not like that. It's getting to know your teacher, being like super present and active in class in terms of answering questions and asking questions, like things like that. Going to talk to your teacher like outside of class I have teachers that I can talk to like about random stuff, like not school related things. And I think that's really helpful. And I think my two teacher recommendations, even though I haven't read them, I think were pretty substantial in helping me get into my schools. Another thing um, besides obviously all the activities and internships is the essays, obviously. So I might do a whole other video dedicated to reading my essays and kind of explaining that because obviously it's also different for each school. But um, for now, I'm just gonna kind of briefly talk about my essays. So there's one main essay that I spent a bajillion hours on, and that is the Common App essay. I had a lot of trouble with that one. I didn't really know what to write. You hear a lot about overused topics, and I think I'm gonna just throw them out there, that unless you can write these, and I got this as advice from a lot of other people um, who had already applied to college, Unless you can write these topics super well, or it's your only option, or it's genuinely the most like influential thing that happened to you in the past four years, don't write about them. One, that is a sports injury. Two is some sort of community service trip. To write about that is a touchy subject. Um, same with any sort of charity, community service oriented essay. What someone once told me is that like it's really difficult to like manage the line between seeming like a nice, caring, giving person who wants to help people and also seeming elitist. This also goes with super generic organizational structures and formats. And so this common app essay 
I think I had a lot of trouble writing it because it was so different than like all of my essays that I've been writing in high school. I've only ever written like analytical essays because I never took a creative writing class. I never really did that. And then in school, all we would do is analyze poems and texts. And so to write a creative essay was not because I like writing. Like I love writing. I especially love creating writing. But for not having done that seriously for four years, it was hard to write this essay. You don't want to structure this as an analytical piece. So you don't want to do like intro, thesis, and then like three supporting body paragraphs and then like a conclusion. Like that's just not going to be fun to read. Your admissions officer is going to spend maybe one minute reading your essay and just skimming it. A lot of them spend less than 30 seconds. But yeah, um, I can do a whole other video about essays maybe later if you want. But basically, the key takeaway is to try to stand out and be unique and let your voice be heard. And I think my biggest advice that I can give about essays is to not have too many people edit it. I know it's hard and there's so many like essay editing services. You don't necessarily need a college counselor, like just putting that out there. I did talk to a college counselor and it's because I did that I can say not the most useful for me, like maybe for some people, but for me, it wasn't that helpful. And I ended up, I remember like I had written an S, a common app essay over the summer. Like I started over the summer, I revised it so many times, I got it to a point where I liked it. And I gave it to a couple friends, my family, and a college counselor. Every single person came back to me with different advice, different things that they hated about it and loved about it. Some people thought it was a terrible just concept and idea and some people were like, this is great, you definitely have to stick with this. And I was just so torn on so many directions. I didn't know who to listen to and I kind of had a lot of breakdowns about this essay. On the other hand, it is important to have people grammar check you and to make sure it makes sense. So I would say give it to one person, maybe not your closest friend or your closest, like your parents, because they're not gonna give you, even if they try, they're not gonna give you super objective and like the hard facts, right? So you have to find someone who is kind of distanced but is also trustworthy. College is hard and again, this, all of this, even though I gave some like general advice, this was all just based off of my singular experience. If you have specific questions, reach out to me or leave them in the comments. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> Good luck if you are a junior right now. Times are weird, but you know, use that to your advantage. You have so much time on your hands right now. Like I'm not even kidding. I was freaking stressed my like end of junior year dealing with all of my AP exams and you're at home right now. So, use your time wisely, get started on some essays, um, reach out to me if you want essay editing or things like that, because I love editing essays. <laughs> um, yeah.